I'm Justin Buster. Welcome to Haskell News. Haskell will have his first fraternity soon. I was able to catch up with a couple of the members. Here's the story now. Phi Sigma Nu is an all Native American fraternity founded in 1997 on the campus of the University of North Carolina. The fraternity was started by seven young natives with a vision to bring cohesion and self-reliance to Native American men on the collegiate level. It has since grown to a nationwide fraternity with seven chapters. I think Phi Sigma Nu would help us stand out to the community and uh, help uh, freshmen, coming, incoming freshmen, become more involved with the Brotherhood as well as uh, the continuing students who could help them. Uh, kind of like a big brother, little brother thing going on. Um, I think it help also the Haskell campus, help students get more involved. There won't be any hazing or anything like that. It's going to be very friendly, very family oriented. It's going to, we're going to have a good time with it, but it's going to be more academically based. Uh, we want to develop a support system of family for the young men here at Haskell so they can feel a little more connected. Applications for membership are due by the 20th. Those who are interested should contact Ryan Cootie at ryan.cootie at haskell.edu. Pilates is available at Haskell now. Here's Ashley Ignacio with more. Students are learning a fun and intense way to work out on campus with positive outcomes. Well, I didn't have upper body strength that much when I started, but now I'm, I have much more of an upper body strength now. Uh, I've been losing weight. Okay. So kind of went down a pant size. Pilates instructor Angelina Adams focuses on balancing and lifting your own body weight in the workout routines, and all for a reasonable cost for Haskell students. Relatively inexpensive way to exercise. You know, we have the mats here, and we have the weights here, and then we have water bottles, and it really doesn't cost a lot of money. Located in the president's room in Stidham Union, the Women's Wellness Group meets Monday through Friday at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 4 p.m. for Pilates, and everyone is welcome to join. University President Chris Redmond gave his State of Haskell address at this year's Spring Convocation. At this time, Haskell is in a state of transition. As we move forward in 2012, we will challenge our campus to help Haskell evolve and ingenuity and ideals which improve our first year experience programs and services to retain students and improve our overall graduation rate. The 2012 powwow was in full swing. Here's Nick Wilder to fill us in on the details. We have our Haskell Saturday, January 28th. Coffin Complex held a welcome back powwow. Gord dance was at 4 to 5, and grand entry started at 6. Prizes were available in men's grass, ladies' jingle, junior girls and boys, tiny tots, ladies' traditional buckskin and cloth, and men's traditional, as well as other groups. There were also fun sponsored events like student giveaway. The evening was ended in a round dance. If you are interested in the May 11th and 12th Pasco Indian Nations Commencement and Native American powwow, you could get event and vendor information at 785-749-8404. See you at the next powwow. This is Nick Wilder reporting for Pasco News. And in sports, Haskell entertained its last home game of the season. Here's Dallas Rudd with the story. Friday night, Haskell ladies took on the number four team, College of the Ozarks, and put on a good fight, but lost 58 to 73. Top scorer for Haskell was Lois Stevens with 16 points. In the second matchup, the Haskell's defense showed up, holding the College of the Ozarks to 43 points. Haskell won with 62 points. Top scorer for Haskell was Brady Fairbanks with 15 points. In the last home game of the season, Haskell ladies tried to get a win for senior night, but fell short 55 to 65 to Central Baptist College. Haskell's top senior scorers both finished with double doubles. Lois Stevens had 17 points with 12 rebounds, and Kayla Davis had 10 points with 11 rebounds. Top scorer for the team was Sidney Jaseep with 19 points. On the men's side, the team put on a dominating performance beating Central Baptist College 108 to 79. Top scorer for Haskell was Brady Fairbanks, who scored 41 points in hitting 9 of 12 shots from the three-point line. 
Senior point guard Brian Trujillo scored 18 points and hit four out of the six shots from the three-point line. They capped off the night by honoring all the senior basketball players. This is Dallas Rudd for the Haskell News. Haskell honored a longtime coach, Phil Hamaratha. Here's Marcus Benoski with the story. Bo Snyder was going to come and choke me, and I was about to get myself in trouble. The coach just said, hey, knock it off, Ernie. I barely knew him. But you know, for some reason, I listened to that guy. And uh, he helped me on a trail that lasts every day until the end of the day, one day at a time, to learn to control my emotions, to control my temper, to be a better person. And it's time I saw a coach. I prayed with him. I took my headdress into that hospital and prayed with him, and I gave him an Indian name. And I apologize to those folks that, because my mom kind of adopted that ability to give that name, but it's Ohiki Kalyu Hawani. And I know I don't say that right, it's a Lakota name for he walks with courage, he walks with bravery. I gave the same name to Coach John Wood. I gave that name to Coach over Thanksgiving weekend. And when, when, he, uh, when he passed and we came down, I wasn't able to go to the, to the burial in Oklahoma. But I walk this campus just about every day I'm here, and I pray on this campus just about every day I hear, I'm here. When I walked down to, to the sweat lodge area, I got down there and this hawk flew right up over the top, and he screamed at me. And he flew around the other side, and he screamed again, and then he flew away. I don't know if that's a miracle or a coincidence, or call it whatever you want, but remember, Coach is young again, Coach is powerful again. And coaches with God. Uh, I guess as most of, as much as anything important was sometimes he would just call me into his office and he would question me. And uh, this was important to him that uh, that I answered him co uh, correctly because if not he would he would get after me. But he'd ask me about my family. He would make sure that, that it was all right, that I wasn't spending too much time up here. Most of them, would you guys think that? So, <laughs> not going to go right there because of him. He told me to go home. He said, you've been here long enough today. He said, you can get home. Uh, so, so I'd go home and and so he's responsible for me staying with you for a long time, Jane. You better thank him. <laughs> but that was important to me. That impacted me quite a bit. He's been a big part of my life, and really, I took him for granted. I'll just be honest with you. I don't know how many of you have done that, and you, when you had time to think about him now. But I know that I took him for granted. You see, I talked to him every day. He was with me, or I was with him, or we crossed paths every day for probably about the last 25 years. For the first couple, I was in recreation, and then he got me over here. But, but uh, I took him for granted, and now, you know, you can kind of use this as a lesson that the people that's close to you, important to you, you might want to rethink your relationships with them. But I just want to thank him. And uh, let you all know that he was an important part of my life. He made me and brought me in. When he went down to hire me, after I left here, I was flying a kite, fixing Brady a kite, and I was out on a football field in Manford, Oklahoma. He drove up there and says, you're going to come work at Haskell. And then he did. So he was important to me. I think he's important to a lot of you. So, you know, after today, I'm probably not going to mourn. I'm not going to feel negative or down but I'm going to celebrate what he did for me, and uh, I would challenge each of you to do that also. Thank you. You'd cringe at the words when you would hear shortcut. I don't know if you guys heard the shortcut. I know Carla heard those words, and um, we were on our way to go play to South Dakota one time, and we were up, everyone fell asleep. We were tired, we were sleeping. Pretty soon, wake up, and the band's jostling around pretty good, bouncing pretty good. 
look up we're on, dirt, on a dirt road in the middle of the badlands middle of nowhere i mean if we would have broke down out there i don't know what would have happened there was nothing around and i asked i said where are we he said shortcut <laughs> i think he was lost it turned out to be a long cut <laughs> Another time, it was a bad snowstorm and we were coming back on, yet another shortcut. Didn't know where we were. He pulls off on the side of the road and he has Jimmy Ferguson, which is about six foot, get out of the van and he said, go knock the snow off of that sign and see where we're at. So Jimmy jumps out, hits the sign and the snow falls off and it's a covered wagon. <laughs> Damn, Jimmy, it's a covered wagon. <laughs> I think it was some bad omen or something. <laughs> That's it for the Haskell News. I'm Justin Buster. We'll see you next time.